What's going on, people? Welcome to Stretford Paddock. I am Adam McCola, and as you can see today, I've got another very, very special guest. Is that man, Joel Red, aka Giuseppe Rossi? Giuseppe Rossi, uh, welcome to Stretford Paddock, and thank you for joining us. How are you, man? It's great to be here. Thank you. Um, I've got to say, we just we were just speaking briefly before we we, we began recording. Um, and I was telling you how much of a fan I was of you when, when we were growing up. And even even after you left Manchester United, to be fair, I always tracked your career. And it, you, you were someone that I felt kind of attached to their career, an emotional attachment to wanting you to do well. Um, so it's an absolute pleasure to be sitting here with you. Um, how, how are you keeping at the moment? Uh, we're doing well. We're doing well. I'm back here in America. Um, I played last year in the MLS, so that was a new experience for me. Um, I'm home. Um, I have a four-month-year-old little daughter, so she's taking up a lot of my time, learning a lot of things. Um, like we were talking about before, I don't know how footballers have kids while they're playing. Um, so a lot of respect to those footballers who do have kids while they're playing and still playing at high levels. God bless. Yeah, we're, it's obviously great that you've you've got that time to be able to see the newborn growing all these early stages in their lives. But you mentioned you you can't wait to get back out there. You're itching to get those boots on again. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, uh, when was the, the last time was November. So it's been a while. Um, it's been a while. Um, you know, I'm always staying fit. I'm always training. Uh, that's never uh, changed. So just waiting, waiting for the phone call. Um, wherever it is, uh, I'm sure it's going to be a place where um, this is going to give me the opportunity uh, to keep enjoying uh, this uh, this beautiful game. Do you still feel you you feel you have a lot to offer the game? Obviously, it was a short spell at Real Salt Lake. I imagine the pandemic um, didn't help that, but you're still still waiting for those calls, waiting to get your boots on and, and, and kick ball for another team. Of course, man. Of course. I mean, I'm 34. I just turned 34 in February, uh, but I'm a young 34. I like to say that I'm a 30-year-old uh, footballer, but 34 in life, right? Unfortunately, I've had um, a few injuries in my career. Um, if you total it up, it's around three or four years of, uh, of uh, rehabbing and being injured. So that's, um, that's very unfortunate. Um, but, you know, having less miles in my leg um, is something that I'm going to, uh, that I'm going to take with me and, um, you know, continue to perform and continue just to, just to, um, just to do what I do, uh, which is loving the game, is making people enjoy the game as much as possible. It's actually funny. Um, when I came to train over there at United, what was that, like two years ago, I think it was? Um, yeah. Ollie was there. I'm talking to Ali, and, um, and he actually said that phrase to me. He's like, yeah, you know, with all the time you spend, you know, you're not at that age, at, at that point, I was around 32. You're not 32. You're 28, 29. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ride with this because that's actually true. So it's good to feel younger. Um, it's good to say uh, I'm 30 instead of 34, especially on that pitch. Um, it, it, he's someone as uh, obviously Ali was someone that suffered with with injuries as well. So you could probably you could relate to. You. It, has that sharpened your mentality as you've got older? Because as someone that watched you from the outset, it seemed to be every time there became a crucial moment in your career or a real turning point, you'd suffer a setback. Yeah. Um, mentally, that must have been a real, real difficulty for you. Yeah, it sucks, man. You nailed it right on the nail right there. Um, every time it was that point where I would, uh, I would, you know, turn the corner and, um, you know, become the top of the top, right, or be part of those conversations. And there was always something regarding these injuries, unfortunately. Um, it, it wasn't a, an ability uh, thing where it's like, oh, he's not good enough or whatnot. Um, it's, unfortunately, it's things that I couldn't, I couldn't control. Um, mm. And whenever these things do happen, you have to take it on the chin. You got to take it on the chin, and um, it depends how bad you want it. It depends on um, how much you care for the game, how much you respect the game, and respect your journey to get to those places. And um, and listen, what I've done and what my family has done for me to get to this level, I never want to let them down or myself down. So I love this game so much. I have a lot of passion for this game, and I'm continuing to. Uh, I'm continuing to uh, work, even though I'm 34 years old. And yes, I've had a very good career. Um, 
I played in great places and whatnot. I'm 34, and I'm and I still wanna, I still wanna compete and um, and put myself out there, right? Uh, so uh, mm. that never gets old, and that's something that just like you said, right? Having all these injuries and doing and um, uh, and taking a toll mentally, um, that never defeated me. I've always I've always come out on top, and you know these first injuries at Villarreal. Um, you know, there were very great things that were happening. You know, I, I had many, many, many great offers, let's put it that way, uh, the, you know, with the biggest teams in the world. But I came back stronger and I continue getting them. Um, so, hey, it comes, with the, up, it, it comes with the sport, man. It comes with the sport. I didn't want it to happen. You know, we play to play at the biggest levels. We play to play with the best. And um, I did. Um, I could have gotten to bigger uh, to you know, to to bigger things, winning many trophies, but unfortunately, that didn't come about. But I'm still here, enjoying it, have a smile. I mean, I when when it. you've scored a goal for Manchester United, yeah. for me, you've you, you've got it all. And let's 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 go back to the start because obviously, sure. as your parents were both from Italy, right? Um, yes, yes they and, were. and they grew. You grew up in New Jersey, um, if Wikipedia has got it right. Um, what was it like for someone that, 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 that parents obviously come from a country which is um, well known for its, its footballing prowess um, to, to growing up in a country where football or soccer as it is over there isn't really regarded as, as a popular sport? Like, did that affect your ability to, to, to play the sport and develop um, as, a, as a player? So, funny story. Um... When I was a kid, in order to get a pickup game, it was impossible, right? So I would, I would ride around my, uh, with my bike, knock on every door that I know. I was like, hey, let's get a pickup game. Let's play, let's play. At the end of the day, every single time, we would end up playing baseball or football. So <laughs> football, the American football, right? Um, so fast forward to today. Um, I'm trying to get players to play big size field, even if the, even if the little size field, just to stay in shape and run. It's the hardest thing ever, man. Even today, mm. even today, I'm calling up people. I'm busy here. I'm busy that. So there's not that, there's not that like love or passion or just wanting to play uh, soccer. Right. And yeah, there's mm. the MLS and yeah, it's growing, but I feel like it's growing more on a commercial level rather than a, deeper you know inner grassroots level soul grassroots blood whatever like whatever you want to call it um so that's what's missing hopefully one day it will get there but definitely it was a challenge um playing in america at a young age that's why my father who was a, who who was a big fan um he played himself he's like listen in order to see how good you really are uh, we have to go and test ourselves out in europe hence why at 12 years old we, we went to italy and then um and that's what so how did that come about, Palmer? Did you move to Italy and then get spotted by Palmer, or did Palmer spot what you were doing in, in, in the States? Yeah, so for three summers, I went to Parma um, at a soccer camp, at a football camp, and, um, and there were, there were uh, scouts out there for Parma. And that's where uh, they invited me at 12 years old to go uh, for a two-week trial. I did it. I killed it. Did well. They invited me back, and they're like, "Hey, uh, if you want to be part of it," and you know, it was a tough decision. I, I left in January at 12 years old. You know, left family, left friends. Me and my dad went. My sister, and my mom, they stayed back. Um, but I didn't know what I was leaving or all this stuff. I just wanted to play soccer, right? Football. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, wanted I wanted to play football. 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 Um, and. Uh, and yeah, that's where it all started. It was tough, man. It was tough. I was crying myself to sleep every night, but um, it is what it is. That's all part of the cycle. So you keep you keep trying to force yourself to say football. Like, um, I'm, I'm, my parents are immigrants, and I grew up in England. So there's a lot of times where I feel more Indian than English, or more Irish than English. But obviously, I'm an English person. Do you feel more Italian than American? Um, I do. I do because that's how I grew up, man. Like my parents, they're fresh off the boat of times, right? So that's how I grew up. That's how I uh, live. You know, pizzas on Sundays, pasta, uh, excuse me, pizza on Fridays, pasta on Sundays, um, all these different traditions that we have, you know, holiday times or whatnot, uh, just values and principles that, you know, they've, uh, uh, they've 
instilled in me um uh everything everything man my first language was italian i went to school at two at two or three years old and i didn't know a word in english it took me two months to you know just to get english going so that's what i feel that's what i uh that's what i know and um that's how eventually i feel like i'm going to be towards my little girl that's amazing so you've always kept those italian roots um of course and that's great to hear, man. And then obviously you get the opportunity to go and play your football in Italy um, yep. for a team as, as well known as Parma. Um, what, were, what were your development years like there leading up to, to being spotted by Manchester United? Uh, they were great, man. They were great. In my years when I was there, Parma was one of the, one of the best teams in Italy and, you know, one of the top, one of the top teams in Europe. You know, there's Buffon. I remember them for having Adriano there. Adriano was there, yes, yes. Uh, Adriano was yeah. with Mutu. They were really, it was a really, really great team. Um, and we used to go every Sunday to watch them play. So you know, it, it was inspiring. They trained like two football fields away from us. So um, it was a great atmosphere for me coming from you know coming from America and training in parks. We were actually in a complex, you know, uh, good fields or whatnot. Um, so definitely a different type of vibe that. Uh, we would have during our soccer trainings and soccer games, football games Amazing. and football training. <laughs> you keep slipping back into that 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 American lingo. Um, we'll get you back saying football. Don't worry about the end of this. Um, <laughs> the, when, when the offer from Manchester United came, were there? I, I assume it wasn't just Manchester United at, at your door. I assume there were probably clubs closer to home or, or closer to to Italy that wanted you as well. Was it? Was it just United? Um, so I was sixteen. I was sixteen. There wasn't really any. Um, there weren't really any offers or whatnot. I still didn't have a contract um, at sixteen with Bob. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I was playing. There was really no talk or nothing like that. It was just um, a normal training session after training session. Uh, a person comes to me. Uh, he says, uh, "Giuseppe Rossi." I'm like, "Yes, yeah, me. Um, I have something for you. This is the team that I work for." So I take out, so I extend my hand. He gives me a pin. He's like, look at it. And I'm like, oh, Manchester United? He's like, yeah, I work for Manchester United. We're interested here and there. Let's talk. I'm like, my father's in the parking lot. And that's how really I started um, the whole entire uh, conversations and meetings that we had. Um, and, of course, man, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say no to, uh, to, uh, you know, to Manchester United. My favorite players as a duo were Andy Cole and Dwight York. So I grew up watching them. So when, when I saw that, I was like, oh, my gosh, definitely. Uh, then I got calls from Bob. Oh, let's do a contract. Yeah, let's do a contract. Then I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Time to go. So did they miss out on their cut then? Because they didn't have a contract with you. Yeah, of course. Of course. Then <laughs> something legal was going on. I didn't care. I didn't want to know. I don't know what the hell happened with that stuff. But um, then I noticed uh, years ago they put a lot of people on the contract because – um, you know, at 16 years old, you lose a player like that at a very young age. Um, yeah. Me and uh, there was another player, Lupoli, who went to Arsenal. He came from the same team as me. We didn't have contracts. And um, I feel like we were the catalysts of, of this type of, um, of these type of transactions. And now everybody's got contracts at 16. <laughs> That's incredible that they could allow, like, Manchester United could watch a player and go, yeah. right, we want to sign him. Yeah. But he, but Palmer have him, and they're not giving him a like that. To me, is 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 absolutely crazy. Like that's crazy. I think what what I've learned, I think, is that it depends how long you've played on their youth system. Uh, you get it. You get X amount of years, even if you don't have a contract. There's no transfer fee or whatnot. You get X amount for how many years they were in the youth system. But it's peanuts. Mm. It's peanuts. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's not. Then you 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 obviously the move happens. Do you remember yeah. your first day at Old Trafford or at Carring was it Carrington then? Or it was, was it Car yeah, my first trip was to Carrington, going to talk to the boss and I'm opening up the doors and Giggs he comes by and um, and he says hi and I'm looking at my dad. Like my, my dad loved Giggs as a player growing up, right? And I'm like, look who the hell that was, right? <laughs> so that was the first taste of um, of how cool it was to be part of United. Yeah, I'm seventeen, I'm signing a professional contract. Uh, but you know, I started, I started, did I start training? I think I started training with the first team for a couple of weeks. 
Then I went down to the reserve and, you know, it was always back and forth. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was the first, uh, impact with the first, with the first team players and it was Giggsy and then it was the boss who we went to see, Sir, uh, Sir Alex Ferguson. What was his relationship like with you? Um, because you were obviously one of the, the star boys in that academy. Um, what, yeah. what was the relationship like with you in, in terms of being able to drop you down in the reserves, pick you up back up into the first team and, and all those kind of things? Did he have a close relationship with you or did he leave that to the academy coaches? No, he was awesome. I mean, you tell any player who plays for Sir, uh, who played for Sir Alex Ferguson, he treats you like, you know, you're one of his own. He treats you like, you know, a diamond, like as if you're a jewel, right? I mean, uh, he takes pride in his... Um, in his relationships with anybody, the youth, mm. the first team players, the uh, the people, who, all the people who worked at who work at Carrington, anybody, right? And I think that's his greatness. Um, he's he is who he is. We all know who he is and how great he is um, on the field. Um, but off the field, he's very he's very very relatable, right? And that was something mm. that really um, that really shocked me. And, you know, just getting to know him through the years, um, how I came to training two years ago with Manchester United, I called Sir Alex Ferguson, right? So it's just, and he was, he was awesome. It was great. It was amazing. Like, you know, just to hear his voice and, you know, him willing uh, to help me. And, um, and that just shows the type of person that he is. That's amazing. Um, did you, did your father move with you to Manchester or were at that point were you in digs and a little bit more on your own? No, no. Uh, my father was with me. Um, so he came with me throughout the whole entire experience. I, I stayed in the digs, I think, for two weeks one time because my father stayed in America for two weeks longer after Christmas. So I, I was I was put into the digs. I was 17 years old. And I told my dad, I'm like, Dad, listen, I don't want to be here no more because, <laughs> because the person put yogurt in their pasta. And I'm like, I don't want that. That's not how you put pasta. So please come back. <laughs> and, uh, and, I and I never stayed in the things anymore. Oh, man. English people and the, the things they do to pass the way. Obviously, uh, you, you won Jimmy Murphy Player of the Year. Um, yeah. I think I think that team was, was it Gerard P.K., Silva, yep. Silva and Ebanks Blake? Funny enough, you say you loved Cole and York. Rossi and Ebanks Blake were my Cole and York of the academy. Like, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't even know if you played like that many games together, but I remember looking at you two like, these guys are the future. Like the, these guys are the ones that are going to come through. And I had this picture of, I remember I used to be on the forums and stuff like that. And I had a picture yeah. of you and Ebanks Blake celebrating as my like avatar, like signature thing. It was, so cool, it was a bit, what, what was your relationship like uh, with those players in there? Because Gerard PK, Ebanks Blake, Richardson, Eagles, I think, was in that. Yeah, David Chris Jones, Eagles. et cetera. Yeah, I mean, we, we were stacked. We were stacked. Man, we had a great team. Um, you know, we had Heaton, who now is uh, uh, who now is uh, doing big things and great things. Um, so Aston Villa, I think. Maybe. Yes, yes, he is. I know that Shawcross played in first division too, right? For for a long time. Um, yeah, Johnny Evans. I mean, he's doing great stuff. Darren Gibson. We were stacked, man. We had a great, great team, uh, players who went on to do great things um, in their careers. And, yeah, me and Sylvan, we were uh, – we did very well up top. I remember also Fraser Campbell. Me and, yeah. Me and, me and, yeah, me and Fraser, we, 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 uh, we, we did some great things. Um, so, I mean, it was just a blessing just to be part of such a uh, great team and, you know, winning everything and more at that level. Um, uh, it, it, it was definitely special. It was definitely special. Do you still have any relationships with those guys or keep in touch with them? Have any WhatsApp groups going or anything? No, man, we're talking about, oh my gosh, bro, fifth, 17 years. Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh, yeah. 17 years. Holy shit. <laughs> 17 we need years. We need to get reunion going. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I played against Pique for seven, eight years in Spain, right? Every single time. So yeah. every time we saw each other, it was always, you know, hugs and. Um, and uh, laughs and stuff, and just reminiscing. I actually spoke to uh, Marcus Neumeyer, right? Do you remember the German Marcus Neumeyer? Yeah, I do remember him actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, um, uh, we talked like a, like, a, like a couple months ago. Um, yeah, these are the, the, really the only contacts that I've uh, that, that, that I've had recently. 
Oh man. Um, the first team that you you played with, I, w- I was looking at I was looking at it today just to remind myself of who exactly was in some of those teams and like the front three of Rude, Ronaldo, Rooney um, were in there. Like, how did you used to look at that? Did you used to look at that as like I can? Did you look at that as a hindrance to you making it at United, or did you think I can learn off them and get to that level? I mean, listen, I was very confident in my ability and each time I would train and play with them, I would get more comfortable and um, I didn't feel apart. I felt like I was, you know, um, part of the group and they respect, they slowly uh, started, you know, respecting my playing ability. And, um, and that's all I, and that's all I ever wanted. I wanted the respect and I wanted the confidence of these big guys. Right. And I was getting it. I had it. And, um, but then, like, you know, you step back and then you're seeing these these great players in front of you, the Roods and the and the Roonies. The Ronaldo, he was more of a left winger, so he wasn't really a striker mm-hmm. um, at that point. Um, there was Luis Saha who was up there with me. Um, you know, these are players who who are amazing. And, uh, yeah, you would try and pick up as much as you can from them, especially from a Rood, right? Rood and this mm-hmm. he, For me, he's one of the best strikers that I've seen uh, finish, do anything in the box in the past 20 years, right? Um, yeah. Just amazing. Just amazing play. Mm. And um, we became good friends. We became good friends. He went to play on Malaga. I, I was at Villarreal. And, um, you know, we said, what's up? And, you know, we were uh, we, we were uh, we were reminiscing. We lived five, six houses down from each other when I was at United. So my dad would take me to training and we used to pick him up, you know, two or three times to training. So it was it was cool like that. Um, definitely, yeah, definitely things I'm going to continue saying to, to, you know, my daughter, if she plays soccer, but if I have a kid one day who, who's a, um, if I have a boy who wants to play soccer, I'm going to be telling him all these stories of, uh, you know, what, what his father did and, um, who he played with and what he learned. Yeah. Cause rude, obviously there's a lot of things that we hear about rude relationship with Ronaldo and stuff and, and the yeah. way rude departed the club. Like, it, that's what caught me up the most because this, here's this guy that, for me, was the greatest goal scorer to pull on the United shirt. Like, pure goal scorer. Like, he's the greatest. Pure. And, like, the way he left was a bit sad. And, like, to hear, like, his relationship with you was so positive and he was so open to someone that he could have regarded as a threat or something. I, I feel like that that's, that's, that's like, really cool because you then came on as a substitute for him on your Premier League debut, didn't you? Yes. And scored at Sunderland. What yes, was that yeah. like? That was awesome. That was awesome. Amazing. Amazing. And I remember somebody was, I think he actually told me that he wanted to run on the field, you know, and go on the match because, you know, everybody was on top of me. And he wanted to come off the bench, but they were saying, no, they had, they had to hold me back. So it was just so cool to hear that because, you know, it shows how much he cared. Um, and, you know, yeah, the celebration, like, you know, scoring and feeling and seeing that ball go in was amazing. And then, Looking at the goal again, what caught me the most was the celebration of the players around me. Um, yeah. And that was just awesome, man. That was, like, so cool. So cool. I, I've got uh, – that's what – because I've been reminding myself of – obviously, I lived these moments, but I've been reminding myself about them because I knew I was going to interview. And I watched that goal, and that's exactly what I said to Jay. Yeah. Like, Jay uh, is one of our, my colleagues on here. And I said to him, like, look at the celebration, like – Everybody loves this guy. Like they're, they're all on top of him because it was a it was a routine win almost as well. So like it wasn't like it was a huge game against Arsenal or something like that. It was a routine. It was a routine win for Manchester United at that point, and it was like they're just all loving this guy. Like sure that, cool. I, I, that was amazing. Amazing. Yeah, it was a the, great first time to, the first time I got to see you live. Because uh, I used to watch the academy games, but I'd never go to them because yeah. I live like 80 miles away. So we would only go to the the Premier League games or the first team games. Um, and the first time I saw you was Burton Albion. Uh, two goals at Old Trafford in the, oh, game, yeah. in the League Cup. It might have been the FA Cup. Um, but again, you were in the mix with the first team. Um, again, you started off so well. How did you feel at that point that that... that this was where you were going to be. Yeah, I mean, the Burnham game, I, I remember it as if it was yesterday. Two goals, I had two assists, one to Giggsy, uh, one to Karen Richardson. 
Um, yeah, man, it was it was awesome. Like you're scoring two goals in Old Trafford. I don't care if it's against Burton Albion or whatnot. You you have that shirt on and you're able to score two goals at Old Trafford and then assisting one to Giggs. Like it's just I mean it's like a dream, right? It's just like it's like a, it's it's a dream. So um, I felt great. I felt great after that game. I remember that I was man of the match. I was man of the match, but Sir Alex Ferguson didn't want me to have it because he didn't want you know my head to get too big. So I think Kieran Richardson took it that time, but um, I'm still waiting for my bottle for that for that <laughs> man of the match uh, game. Yeah, uh, that's that's cool. Yeah, to like <laughs> let me just everyone celebrate his goals with him. Every like he's scoring two assists. Let's just peg this guy back a little bit. Yeah, like <laughs> make sure he works hard next time. I love I love that from Fergie. Right. Um, there's a there's a story about uh, Vidic giving you his league cup medal. Is that is that true or is that a myth? Yeah, no, no, no. It's uh, um, it's uh, it's uh, it's one hundred percent true. I played up to the semifinals. I think it was. Every single game, um, um, I started, I think, like two or three games during that run. And uh, the finals, which was at Cardiff, um, I, wasn't, um, I wasn't in the squad, but, you know, we were in the stands uh, watching, obviously. And uh, we won it. We were on the field. And we didn't get the medals, right? We did not get the medals. Who, who wasn't part of the, of, the, of, the, of the team playing or on the bench? And Vidic, who just signed, I think, like a, like a couple of weeks before, he, um, he was on the bench. He takes it. He sees me. He's like, here, this is for you. I know you you deserve it more than me. And I was 17 or 18. I forgot how much, um, how old I was. I, I was like, thank you. That's amazing. You know what I mean? I mean, I wanted a medal, but I didn't get it. I was kind of like, you know, I was like, all right, maybe I'll get it when I get to Carrington. They'll send some yeah. over for me and, you know, the other ones. Um, but that gesture um, was amazing. And, you know, it, it just tells you so much about Vidic, about him and not the player he was, but just how much everybody loved him around the club. When I went to train there two, mm -hmm. two years ago, I saw him there and it was just like, it was so cool. It was like a great embrace. How well are you? How's it? And I mean, it was just so, so cool. And I got to meet Vidic only for like a year or whatnot, but it was so cool, man. It was just nice to just talk and, and uh, relive things. It's great to hear that this dressing room that you have these players that eventually went on to win the European Cup and you yeah. could imagine they'd like be super like, I don't know, just, oh, you hear all these stories about football teams and to hear like they're just so open and embracing to a young player that's coming through. It, it's great to hear that yes. people that are ruthless winners still find a time to be able to do that because ultimately you're fighting for their spots in the team. Like they could feel threatened. And the fact that they don't, obviously not Vidic, because you're not going to play centre back. But um, like, it, it's good to hear, man. It's, it shows you how good the team spirit was at that team then as well. Yeah, the team spirit, and then also just the culture of what Manchester United is all about, right? It's it's about the team. It's not about you know one one individual or not. And they see that if you respect the culture, if you respect your um, your position as a young player and trying to learn and continue to. You know, get better, get better, and better, and better, and show your your you know your ability or not. Then it's just a natural you know uh, gel mm. among the big one, uh, you know the older players and the younger players. Hundred percent. You obviously went on loan to Newcastle, Palmer. I don't want to get into that too much, but yeah. I thought at Newcastle, you got done over. I think they chopped and changed managers. Yeah, um, was... And I remember watching like, why is Giuseppe Rossi on the bench again? Like. What the hell is going on here? Like all the time, at the time I watch Newcastle. Like, what, did you feel that way from the outside looking in that this is a bad move? Like they're changing managers and it was frustrating. No me. It was frustrating, man. It was frustrating. I was 19, and you know I saw the players that were in front of me. Um, I could have definitely played and you know helped out the team and you know done good things. I started two games only. One of them was against Portsmouth, and I was able to score and do well. The other game was against Chelsea as a left winger, which was in my position. But uh, <laughs> what can you do? I got I got megged pretty badly from SCM, but that's another story. Uh, <laughs> that's another story. Uh, but yeah, I was. Um, it was very disappointing. The training sessions weren't quality. 
or not quality. Um, I, I thought there was going to be something different. I'm used to Manchester United for those, you know, year or two years that I was there, two years and then going on loan. I was like, all right, maybe, you know, we'll get more playing time. Um, and, you know, the training will continue being good. Horrible. Horrible. Uh, mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, it was, another funny story, quick funny story. The last game before my loan was over was like the 26th of December, whatever it was, and it was against Manchester United. Um, so, like, I had to go away from every single meeting. I couldn't be part of the team meetings or what, to, or, what or what was going on because the coach was scared that, that I was going to go and rely information to, you know, United. So I was like, get me out of here, please. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that is so, that's, that's paranoia. <laughs> at its finest, right? Who was, who was it? Glenn Roder or Gre- yeah. Graham Sunes? Gre- yes. Graham Sunes? Glenn, Glenn Roder. Glenn Roder. Oh, okay. Um, eventually you did unfortunately leave Manchester United, uh, for Villarreal. Uh, I want to speak about one season in particular at Villarreal, but before that, Leaving Manchester United, what was how did it how did it go down? I didn't have problems physically right now. It was just a matter of you know, I'm 20 now, and um, I would like to continue showcasing my talent, continue to do uh, just to continue doing well. After Newcastle, I went six months on loan to Parma, and I played in Serie A. I scored nine goals in 18 games, and I did very well. I did very very well, and um, there was interest of you know teams that wanted me or whatnot. But my my goal was to continue doing well for Manchester United and growing and getting as much playing time as I can. Um, obviously, nothing was guaranteed. And I understand that. I'm not stupid. Um, but, you know, I think I've showed that I could, you know, be relied on and, you know, do well. Um, I've had I had a conversation uh, with with Kedos, Carlos Kedos, uh, which wasn't really that promising. Unfortunately, I think he had other ideas and players that he brought in that he wanted to, um, you know, have. Because that was around 06, 07. We, that was, 07 when we signed. Like, that was 07, 08. Okay, so yes. Uh, Nani, Tevez, Nani. Tevez, yeah. So he had players that he wanted to, you know, use and um, and not really, you know, care for me too much. Uh, Ferguson was a different, was a different discussion where he would have loved for me to stay. And he says, listen, I support whatever you do. I would love for you to stay. But if you decide to go somewhere else, um, I 100% understand. Uh, so, you know, two different conversations that I had with the, uh, with, with, with the coaches. And uh, talking about it one night, we decided that the best thing to, you know, to play, be consistent, was to, was to leave. Unfortunately, um, you know, I had to do it. But it helped my career uh, immensely. Uh, at that time, it did. I mean, Villarreal were a highly regarded team. Obviously, yeah. they still are. Um, but obviously, at that point, I remember because Manuel Pellegrini was the boss. Was was he? Sorry, he was our coach. Memories he was our coach. living here. Yeah, um, and you, you, Santa Cazorla was in that team. I think Marcos Senna. Um, so they had some very experienced players, some quality players there. Um, yeah. And you go there, you're playing in La Liga. What was that experience like playing in Spain? Because after you played in Italy and, and England at that point, um, how, how did it differ? Yeah, two different styles of, of playing, two different mentalities, two different ways of preparing for the game, two different ways of, you know, living the week, uh, building up to the game. Um, Spain is just a different type of, you know, football. Um, it's something that, suited me very well and um you know from day one i was playing i was uh, i was an important part of the team and you know it was just it was just a great uh fit it was a great match mm-hmm. um the 2010 11 season was a season i wanted to talk about obviously yeah 32 goals in 57 games um it, 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 it basically Proved me right at the time when I was saying this guy is the this guy is the nuts, but also it it, it was your arrival on the on the big stage, right? That look at this guy, he's hit thirty plus in a season, he's tearing it up playing Champions League football. I think you had a similar one in two kind of record in the Champions League as well. Um, how did you feel at that point in your career? Like this move is paying off. Yeah, that was. That was one of my best seasons, if not the best season, you know, 30 plus playing every game, 
you know, finishing the season as one of the best players in the league behind Ronaldo and Messi, it was, uh, you know, there I was um, getting... But he can say that. Yeah, no, it's great. It's crazy because I actually had this conversation with one of my friends like three or four days ago. So it's crazy that I actually had this conversation two times in the past uh, four days. But, uh, yeah, you know, having that and then, you know, offers to go play for Barcelona, to go play for uh, Juventus, these, these, you know, came about. And, um, and it was great, man. Like, you know, like we were talking about, we got to the top, right? We, we got to the top, all this hard work on a sacrifice. And now we are able to go to teams that maybe have more of a possibility of actually winning at the, um, on the biggest stages. Um, unfortunately, that year, um, we were, well, not unfortunate, but we were in Champions League and we just saw Santi Gasorla. Uh, they had to choose between me or Santi and, um, and uh, they said that uh, I was more of an important piece to the team, so they wanted to keep me. So they kept me and didn't decide to sell me. Um, that's, that was the season of the Barcelona and the Juventus offers that came in. Um, fast forward, the season starts and I get injured. ACL, October. And, um, and fast forward again, five and a half months, rehab, rehab, rehab. Um, I finally get back to training. We were having a scrimmage and I hear, a, I hear, a I hear a click again. Um, it was ACL again, right? On that same day, on that same day, my agents were in, were at Bayern Munich and, um, they had everything done, uh, five years very good money. Um, they were going to call me and say, listen, we had this offer on the table. Let's sign. And then, you know, you're able to go. On that same day, when they call me, I'm like, hey, listen, I just got an ACL injury again. And they were like, are you kidding me? This is where we are. And this is what, and this is what we're doing. So contract, we had to rip it up and, you know, couldn't do that again. So uh, it sucks, man. It sucks because, you know, you created something great. You created a great name for yourself. You're showing that, you know, you are one of the best players out there, big teams like these, like these teams want you and, um, and um, are doing uh, and are offering very good uh, uh, transfer fees or whatnot for you, but you're not able to go. So that was rough. Man. That was rough. Take it, taking it back a bit. When, when the, when the offers for Bayern Munich and Juve were rejected, how did, were you Juve. someone Barcelona that, and Juve. Sorry, was, sorry, Barcelona and Juve. Yeah. yeah was when the, were rejected, how did you feel that? Did you were you someone that rocked the boat or just thought, or I'm just going to get my head down and I'll, I'll move next summer? How how did you feel at that point? No, I was never. I was. Ne I never really put my ego first, and then you know my team or when I. It was always. I'm always and have always been a team player, and you know how Villarreal um, helped me through tough times in my life. I lost my father, and they were always there for me. They let me go for a month and you know grieve and whatnot, and be with my family back in America. Um, you know, they've always been great to me. Uh, that summer um, happened. I had the best season and um, uh, they sold Santi. And when we heard Barcelona was, they made an offer to Villarreal. I think it was around like 20 million. Uh, but they had a lot of bonuses and not too much upfront money. They wanted to, if they reversed it, Barcelona having more upfront and less bonus, then it, it would have probably been a done deal and I would have gone there and Alexis Sanchez wouldn't have gone there. Um, but since that was the case, they didn't feel comfortable giving too much upfront money. Hence why they went to the other, to, uh, to Sanchez, Fine right? margin. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's Fine crazy. Margin. It's crazy, but whatever, right? Uh, that happened. And then the Bayern Munich one as well. Like that's something that I'd yeah. never really, I don't know if it was quite popular news at the time, but I could, I couldn't remember that. And that's, like another thing that people don't realize, like obviously you're someone that we look at, and I think injuries didn't help, but I also didn't know that these moves were lined up for you, and it kind of makes it. Man, I got a, I have a few more stories like that, and it's crazy just because of how, you know, things that I cannot control, which is something that I'm still struggling up here to freaking uh, to get around and whatnot. But things that I can't control had to dictate certain things in my career um while if it was in my hands and in my power um i know that you know we would have had 
a couple trophies in these in these trophy cases and you know done even better things than what I did. Let's put it that way, right? Some bro, you 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 score for Manchester United, man. That's all I'm gonna keep saying to you. Like <laughs> you score, yeah, you yeah, score yeah, for yeah, Manchester yeah, United. Yeah, <laughs> Yes. Um, 2008 Olympics, though you were golden boot winner there as well, weren't you? Um, representing your country, golden yeah. boot. Obviously, before moving to Italy and playing in Serie A uh, for Fiorentina, that must have been a proud moment. Yeah, it was awesome, man. I mean, being part of the Olympics and just saying that you know I participated in the Olympics um, is a dream come true for any athlete, right? I mean, it's maybe it's not regarded, it's not a very high regard in the football world, but you know. It's it's something amazing. It's, um, it's something amazing to go out there and represent your country. Um, unfortunately, we did lose in the quarterfinals, which was a game that we should have won. Was, was that against Belgium? Belgium? It was against Belgium. They had a very, very good team. They were stacked. Uh, but they were down the man who got – somebody got red card. I think it was Vertonghen who got red carded. And, um, you know, it was 2-2. And then the stupid goal in the last 10 minutes – Literally went underneath the guy, the goalie's arms by accident, and whatever we lose. Um, it was heartbreaking. That was the first time I ever cried after a game uh, that you know that I lost. So um, it was definitely heartbreaking. You know, it was you know awesome to get high, uh, goal score uh, with players like Messi, Ronaldinho. Who else was playing there? I forgot who else was playing there, but these were the big team. You know, these were the big guys playing up top. In the game, so it was definitely a great. Further, when you say Messi and Ronaldinho, Messi and Ronaldinho. Uh, oh, man, it two, been, two if greatest. we won, we would have played against Barcelona. It would have been actually Barcelona. We would have played against uh, Brazil, and um, it would have been awesome to have to play against uh, Ronaldinho. You know, even though we did one time, I did one time playing with Ronaldinho. It was amazing. Who is um, who is the uh, greatest player you've or, or you? The player that you've played against and gone, whoa! I'm on the pitch with this guy. Like, who's the player that made you do that the most? Well, the players, the players that I played against that were ridiculous, and I, you know, it kind of opened up my eyes and saying, "Damn!" It was definitely Messi and Iniesta. Um, what was it? There was one time a corner kicker one that I had to go back, and they play a short, so I had to go out and you know defend a, defend a two v two, and I'm against Messi, and I'm like, "All right, oh, right, here's a good chance to get it." I was quick. I was quick. So I was like, all right, I'm going to do it. Boom. That ball was like past me. He made two or three touches already after I stuck out my leg. I'm like, holy gosh, man, this kid is quick. <laughs> Mind you, he was my age. He was like 20, 21, right? He wasn't the messy he is today, but we all knew that he, he was great. Um, so I saw a glimpse of greatness there. And then, you know, the years, the years went on and, and you just continue seeing greatness, greatness from him. And in yes, like you just couldn't get the ball away from him. It was impossible. It was impossible. Mm. That would have been, yeah, I think if you played, early Messi would have been just before. Uh, so we played them in 07, 08. That probably would have been that Messi um, yeah. around that era. And yeah. um, he was amazing then as well. Um, obviously, at Fiorentina, that is one game I want to speak about in particular. And you probably already know. Yeah. Um, obviously, in the 13, 14 season, 17 goals in 24 games. But you also have a game against Juventus, uh, yeah. against the likes of Pogba, Tevez, um, Pirlo, I think, played in that game as well. Um, and you score a hat-trick to come from behind and win. As an Italian, yeah. as well, as a striker, and obviously, how, how was that for you? Is that one of those games you look at the most with fondness? I mean, there's definitely one of them just because of what it meant uh, between Juventus and Fiorentina. There's a big, 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 big rivalry, which goes on for years and years. And Fiorentina having been in Juventus in 15 plus years. So, you know, it was, it was definitely something special, something that if I go back to Florence on a vacation, I'm not going to pay for a dinner. Let's put it that way. Right. Still after, <laughs> after 10 years. Right. So um, it was definitely something special, um, you know, scoring three goals against, Buffon, like, yeah, I played with him on the national team and, you know, we're friends or whatnot, but just saying that I was able to score three goals against Buffon is going to be something that I will tell my little girl if she gets, if she's a striker and I'll be like, hey, listen, if I tell you to do this, all right, there's a reason why, because I know what I'm doing. You know, do you want, do you understand, little girl? Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, something special, something really good. 
that happened to me. Yeah, that's, that's nuts. Yeah. But I forgot Buffon was in goal as well. How can you forget? Yeah. Like, yeah. that is that was a great team. Um, I think, didn't they win like four? I think that team won four league titles or yeah. So after that game, joke. they were up uh three one and then we and then we me, yeah, three no two zero and then and then we went for the two, right? After that game, they didn't lose one game the whole entire season. And uh that's when they started I think nine in a row. They won nine in a row um of titles. I mean this year they're gonna lose it, but nine in a row. Mm. Um which league is it that you watch the most now? Is it is it the Italian or you watch everything? I watch Italian just because, you know, I watch Fiorentina. I, I always keep tabs on my ex-teams, which is Fiorentina, Villarreal, and Menu, right? Um, I always look for their results. I try to catch games as much as I can. Um, I don't know. I really haven't been watching too much uh, these past uh, years. Um, so, yeah, I'm just trying to figure – I'm just trying to see – if I could catch a game, I could do. I'm not going to really make time out of my day to go watch a game because I have a lot more other things to do. The time difference probably doesn't help as well. <laughs> that's, a time oh, difference. Big, that's a big deal, yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, can, I can imagine. Um, before, we, before we wrap up, obviously you trained yeah. with, uh, in 2019, you trained with the first team uh, for a short period of time. Um, yeah. Manchester United. Uh, and Ali Gunnar Solskjaer. Um, could you tell he was going to get the job at that point? Because he was he was still caretaker, wasn't he, at that at that time? I think he was, right? He just came in, like, maybe, like, a month yeah. in. And, um, and I had conversations with people around the club, and uh, they were saying, listen, from when he came on, it's a new, uh, it's a new breath of fresh air. Um, we're going back to how it was. Um, and what made us who we are, right? And Fergie built, you know, Fergie built that culture at Man United. He's the one who implemented everything and more to uh, to grow from and continue being successful. Um, it's normal when you have uh, high ego uh, coaches come in, they're going to do it their way. Um, but when you have somebody who's humble enough like Anali, somebody who learned from Fergie, but also being humble enough to mm -hmm. uh, to realize what is needed and maybe it differs a little bit with what you believe in. Um, uh, you know what it's going to take in order to be successful. That's what he's done. And, um, you know, you can only tip your cap. Uh, you can only tip your cap to what he's been doing. And, you know, I can't wait. I can't wait to see him win, celebrate, uh, because he definitely deserved it. He's an awesome guy. Do you think he will bring um, some trophies back? Hell yeah. <laughs> that's what that's what we need to hear. Um, that's for sure. Um, before you go, one 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 message that you have for Manchester United fans, or one lasting memory, or how would you sum up your your time at, at Manchester United? I mean, it was a dream come true. Something that um, that I'm gonna cherish for the rest of my life. Um, and you know when they say once a red, always a red. Um, that's that's how it is for me. That's how it is for me. I always look out for whatever happens with that, with the club, and um, I'm hoping to see uh, so much success for uh, for the people in red. If you're ever in England, you need to uh, give us a shout, and we'll bring you to a game with us. It'd be, it'd be great to have uh, you that in awesome. United. And... <laughs> that would be awesome. um, I don't thank drink you for beer, so don't take me out after or before. But the game, I'm there. We can take you for some uh, English pasta. You love that stuff, don't you? English pasta? No, my man. Yeah. No, 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 no. no, thank you. <laughs> um, Giuseppe Rossi, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, on thank you, man. It's a pleasure. Um, and thank you for the memories. Um, genuinely, I know you probably feel like a certain way about certain things, but. Honestly, man, you've you've absolutely lived the dream, and thank like, you. thank you so much. Like, not even just scoring for United, like just playing professionally. I think, like, I spoke to Raval, and I've speak, I spoke to Federico Makeda and yourself, and you, you guys are players that us Manchester United fans look at and think, what if? But I always think you don't have to think that way because you did it. Like, you came through the academy. Yes, maybe it didn't go for right for you at United, but. Mm -hmm. you, you you played at the highest level man and i think that's a, a great 
great thing, obviously. So thanks, yeah, man. thanks for your time and thanks for your memories. You got it. And uh, good luck with uh, parenthood as well. Um, and hopefully you're back in the game soon. I need it. Thank you. And I hope so. <laughs> I hope to be out there very soon.